Hi, I got some questions about my video yesterday and I will answer two of them now. I can start with the short one or the simple one and that is uh, about the Raspberry Pi that was hitting a bench with the, that was running West tool and how to make one and that's actually quite simple if these instructions work. So then I go to my GitHub and then I go to Vask Pi OS and then there is a build root image that compiles and runs everything with Vask tool and the Raspberry Pi. So you will need a Linux system for running these instructions. It's probably not easy, easily work on anything else, but you need a, I think the most basic build systems so and most Linux distros will just work out of the box. So if you have something Debian based, you can just install the build instruction probably. And then you can use the instructions for cloning the image. And then you have some instructions for the Raspberry Pi 3 or the Pi 4. And once you have built the image, this will take between like half an hour and maybe a couple of hours depending on how fast the computer is then you can just write the image to the SD, to an SD card. I notice sometimes this command fails so if it doesn't work you can just try to run it again and obviously you also have to choose which card it is. So that was that and the other thing I was asked is uh, how would I go about doing CAN communication from Lisp in Vesk tool and I have uh, I will show a demo here so I have this uh, grey hill joystick uh, that I happen to have laying around and they come in a few different models and uh, they use this J1939 CAN standard which is quite simple to implement code for. Uh, it's also quite common for these industrial things to use CAN open but if you don't know what you're getting into then this standard is much easier to use than CAN open so go for that in that case. So uh, once you have the joystick, then there is also another data sheet that where you have to figure out how to communicate. And that was a bit tricky for this one because there are different models. Some, uh, some of them have an analog stick. Some of them only have uh, uh, like four different buttons in all directions. Some, some of them you can twist it, some of them you can't. So there are a few different versions of it. But we can start by, yeah, I know which one I have, and we can just start by trying to receive CAN frames from it. Sending CAN frames is obviously easier because you just use the send CAN function, it will send them. And receiving, for receiving them, we have to register an event handler. And uh, that is slightly trickier, but not that bad. So now I just connected uh, uh, to the VASC, and I used the latest firmware from today. And then you can start by changing the CAN bar rate. You can also change it on the joystick itself uh, once you have the communication going, but the, by default this uses uh, 250 kilobaud. So we will set that. And then we can go to the VASC dev tools. I can also mention that there is also a CAN an analyzer built into VASC. And if you change the CAN mode from VASC to Combridge, then you can just see all the messages that are on the CAN bus, whether they're extended or not. And you can also send frames that are extended or not. And uh, if you don't know that, so CAN frames, they always have up to eight bytes and you have an ID and there are two types of IDs. There's a standard ID that is like 11 bits and there's the extended ones ID that is a few more bits, uh, 28 or something, I don't remember. So let's go to Lisp and then we can, as usual, start by looking at the documentation. So we'll open this page. And then you go to the search bar. Uh, if we search for can, can we can also do can send, for example. So this is how I would send it: just to can send ID and data, and data can be a Lisp list or a byte array. But uh, when you want to receive, you actually have to go to events. So here we have events, and events work in a bit different way or the work kind of like you would expect from events. So you have to register an event handler and uh, that, that event handler has to run the receive function which means uh, sleep until some other thread sends you a message and then when you have this handler registered then uh, en enable the events in the C code by running these list functions then it will, it will send those events to you every time those things are received. So in this case uh, uh, we can receive uh, 
these types of them. So we can set, receive standard ID CAN frames, extended ID CAN frames, and also data that is sent from the QML code, for example. And that is what I used to have this remote control for the balancing robot. So let us just copy and paste this code into here and then remove the stuff that we don't need so we don't care about data. Uh, we're, gonna, we're going to process extended IDs because the joystick uses extended can frame IDs and remove the line that does the data event. So, and then we also change this one to EID here and here. So the thing that happens now is that we do event register handler, which is also one of the best extensions. And what we register is the output of spawn, which spawns this in a new thread and returns an ID. And then we spawn this event handler. I mean, it, you can call it anything. It's just as long as this name and this name is the same. So then we tell the C code that we have an event handler with this ID that we can call and send messages to every time something is uh, every time we receive a message that we are interested in. And after that, you have to enable the events that you want to listen for. And we want to listen for can EID. Also note to myself, there shouldn't be a string really, it should be a symbol, but let's keep it as a string for now. Uh, did control S by habit, but I haven't set the file, but we don't really need to save it. So let's see if this works. Go to the console. And by default, I don't think it will send anything. Uh, or it will, but we haven't sent anything to it, and I think then it just goes to sleep. So I will press one of the buttons. And then you see that we start to receive some data. And you can see the thing that is going on here. So we see the it sends this ID. And the other thing that we receive here that looks like a string with some strange character. So that is another error that I can talk a bit about, and that is how array arrays work in this BM. So strings are a type of array that can contain bytes, and if you print them, then it will assume it is just a text array, a text string. But in this case, case, it is a byte array with data from the joystick. And then if you go to the documentation, then just below events, you have some information on how array, arrays work in LISPM. And to deal with arrays, you can use uh, those buff functions. So you have the buff get and the buff set functions, and they're quite simple. So you can say that I want to get an in 16 from this array at index 0. So this will take the first two bytes and assume that they are in signed 16-bit integer and return that integer to you. And you can also pass a little endian in the end. It assumes they are big endian by default, but you can also make them little endian. And these are in fact very similar to the array buffer object in JavaScript uh, that you might be used to. That's actually what they're inspired by. So let's uh, use this thing. It's actually not an in 16, but let's just zoom it is and see what we print then. And then we do instead of data, use this one, and this is the buffer. And then we start from index zero. Run it again. And now I will. And now I'm moving the joystick, and you can see that something is happening there with this number. But it's obviously not the right thing, so in order to decode it properly, I have to look in this document and figure out what all the bits and bytes in the CAN message mean. Another thing when we deal with CAN frames is also, we can see that, yeah, we get the ID and the data. We'll always get an ID, but we don't know how much data we got, so we can get zero, I think we can get zero bytes even, zero up to eight bytes in a CAN frame. And in order to see how long it is, you can use bufflen. And it only takes one argument to so remove the zero and upload it. And then we'll press a button again. And I wonder why I only got one print here. I think I might have 
unplug the joystick somehow. Let me upload the code again and see what happens. Oh, I just unplugged it and plugged it in. I think if you don't send anything to it for a too long time, then it goes to sleep and doesn't wake up again. Uh, but now it's running again, and you can see that it will always send me eight bytes at a time, if that is something that is interesting to know. So, yeah, another thing to mention is that this will kind of be, this will run by itself and receive processed events once you receive them, and you can obviously do other things after you have initialized this if you want to have some other function or thread that does things at the same time, like sending events. And you can also send the answers from, from the event handler. So this particular joystick, I actually have an example for it that implements the entire protocol for it. So I remove this code and then we can go to examples and then we do the can joystick example. And you can see it's not that much code for what it does, it's 100 lines of Lisp, including all the comments, and then we upload this one. And now you can see that a bunch of stuff is showing up here, so you can select the x and y axis, go to the plot, and now when I move it, you see red is the y axis and blue is the x axis. So we can get the analog values for them and we can also get all the buttons. Uh, I'm not putting them in the workspace here now, but I'm actually decoding them and putting in a list. So this is a button list and we can just uh, query this list and get the pressed state of each button. Uh, the other thing that you might be see seeing here is that we have those LEDs blinking on the joystick. And that is one of the things you have to keep sending to it. Not to blink the LEDs, but you have to send it something for the joystick to know that you are, um, that the system is up and running so it doesn't go into sleep mode. And that we do by sending frames. Uh, but before I get there, I can also talk a bit more about this event handler. So we have exactly what I had before. So we have this event handler and we have this extended ID thing. And when we receive it, we we call this function up here, and then we look at the ID, and if the ID is this, uh, you can actually look what the different fields in the ID themselves mean for this joystick and this scan standard, but as it turns out, it will always send the same ID, and then you, if you receive it and match, and match on it, then you can just process the data. And then, yeah, in here, then we decode the x-axis and y-axis by these buff get functions. And uh, here I'm using a list function that is called bits deck int. Uh, it, it is also described in the, in the documentation document, but you can also use regular shift left and shift right and 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 or and so on that you normally use when you deal with numbers in C and byte arrays and, bit, and bits. So that's quite easy to do from here. Now to set the LEDs, so we have uh, the event handler up here and we also have this button function that is kind of a loop that runs all the time you see it calls itself at the end and you have a yield in it and what we do is that we count from one up to seven and we have this code here because for some reason index six is missing on this joystick or i think i think there is some reason for it but i don't remember what it was but we skipped that and then we have a function that we created that's called set the button leds and we set it to the button that we are at now. And then you can set LED 1, LED 2, and LED 3. And you can set them to off or on or to blinking. And when you set them to blinking, you can decide, you can choose a few different rates to blink at. And this is what this set button function does. So you can see that it does the send, uh, can send EID, and it sends the ID and the message. And the message we just build by making a list of bytes according to, well, the data sheet and which button we want to set with these different numbers here. And then this ID send, uh, we can also look at that. So we construct it also according to the data sheet and we have this uh, source address and we have to use our own ID and I just made up one here. And then we have to put that in the ID out according to what was written there. And if we do it like this, then it works. 
and that is why we go through one button at a time. So this is this uh, this loop running. You see that we do one and a half seconds and move on to the next button, and then we start over when we are at the last button. So that is working. Now let's do so try to do something with the joystick. So we have, uh, as before, I have my RC server connected to the PPM port. And if we configure the VEST for it, we can also control servers, as you might have seen yesterday. So we go to the documentation, do servo, set servo. And you can see that there is a list function called set server that takes a value in the range 0 to 1. And in order for this to work, we also have to enable server output in the app settings. So let's go ahead and do that first. App settings general, enable server output, true and right. And now the set server function should be working. So, uh, yeah, let's go back here. So here we have decoded the X and Y axis and let's set the server to the Y axis. And if you plot this one, you can see that if I move it, we get the range from one to minus one, but the servo takes zero to one. You can also send negative values, but it would just treat them as zero. And we want to, in that case, it, nothing would happen if we go down and then we would have the whole, entire range up here. So we want to use the whole range and we have to convert it a bit. So in the code here, we do set servo and then we do y actually if you just set it to the y axis you just write this but uh, in order to change the range so you know, we know that we start at minus one so we have to add one to it to start with uh, plus y axis one so now you have something in the range from zero to two and uh, that's also wrong because we want to be 0 to 1, so then we can divide this thing by 2. And now we should have a value from the y-axis that goes between 0 and 1 as we move this uh, joystick from minus 1 to plus 1. Let's see if that works. And it does. So that is how we receive CAN frames in Lisp on the VASC, and also how we send CAN frames, and how we use the data from the CAN frames to control a server in this case, but obviously we can also control the motor from it. So I hope that was helpful. <laughs>